will. With, Ready? Okay. <clears throat> Julia, I can say in all honesty, it's wonderful to see you oh, again. Thank you. It's been too long, and I'm so happy that we're here today, and happy that we are here to talk about the Pelican Brief, because I think you people have a terrific hit oh, thank on you. the way. I really do. You know, the book, everybody, so many millions of people have read the book and love it, and and uh, the the movie really is is quite true to the book. I, I think mean, it is, follows yeah. it very mm -hmm. very closely. It's my understanding that John Grisham had you in mind when he wrote the novel. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what he says. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Have you ever met him? <clears throat> I did. I met him. He came down one day on the set and came down with his wife and kids, and he was lovely. We had a nice time with them. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, which is, you know, and we sort of exchanged a couple of uh, funny letters with each other after I read the book, and I wrote to him, and then he wrote me back, and, um, but it's very uh, flattering, and then, you know, equally as flattering to have Alan acquire the book and, uh, and have me in mind for the part, and, uh, and then for me to read it and want to do it, it was sort of all a sort of a done deal at that point, so, yeah, it's nice when it all comes together like that. Were there any questions that you asked John Grisham about Darby? Um, <clears throat> no, actually, by the time he, you know, came down to visit and stuff, Darby was, was, you know, ours as much as his. You know, we'd been with her for so long and we'd shot so much stuff and everything that it was sort of, you know, too late for questions kind of thing. We'd either done it right or, you know, or not. So, uh, but I think that, you know, Alan had a great sense of her and, and had very strong feelings and, um, and things that he wanted from her and wanted us to know about her and stuff. So she was a great part to play. I noticed in one scene, it just jumped out at the, uh, from the screen at me, Julia, how much in one scene you looked like Audrey Hepburn. Mm -hmm. I mean, really, if I'd walked in the theater at that moment, I would have said, what's Audrey Hepburn doing up there? <laughs> well. I it's where know. you have your hair up <laughs> mm -hmm. or pulled back or mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. And um, did you ever meet her? Uh, I, no, I never met her. I uh, exchanged messages with her and I uh, <clears throat> read a speech for her when she uh, won an award, a Lifetime Achievement Award from the Screen Actors Guild that she um, couldn't accept. But uh, I, I actually, I unfortunately never got a chance to, to meet her in real life. We. We had, actually, no, I'm telling a complete lie. I, I sort of blocking this out of my mind. I did meet her once. She was on a plane um, coming from Paris that I was on, and I sat staring at her as she was sleeping, and then, and I kept wanting to just sort of say hi, and I was too shy, and then uh, as I got off the plane, I figured uh, I missed my chance, and I was going down through customs, and she came up to me and, and tapped me on the shoulder. I turned and she gave me a huge hug, and she said, I just wanted to say hi. And, and you know, and we sort of gushed at each other, and then and then left. So, so we did have that one thing. At what point in your career was that? Had you already made Pretty Woman? Yes, this is just uh, a year and a half ago, or something. Oh, oh, yes. There's one question I wanted to ask you, and that is, um, do you have any particular connection with the Hispanic culture, be it? art or Hispanic music or travels maybe that you have made to a country? Well, I went um, last year to Costa Rica and had an incredible time down there and loved it and actually, uh, you know, started trying to attempt to learn Spanish. And my favorite poet is Pablo Neruda. And uh, so I found, I found the people and the environment to, incredibly appealing down there. I was extraordinarily happy on my trips down there. What is it about the people, do you think? They, they're very uh, kind. There's a great kindness. There's a great sense of sort of uh, community and a real, uh, everyone is sort of part of the family until sort of proven otherwise kind of thing. You know, they're, they're very accepting and, and, uh, and very warm and it's beautiful down there, really beautiful. I went to this one place called the Osa Peninsula, which is uh, 
sort of this little stretch of, of land between the ocean and the rainforest. And it's, it's quite extraordinary down there. And the way the people live down there is so uh, difficult, and they do it in sort of this effortless way. And it's all about the land and, and nature, and it's very peaceful and beautiful down there. Getting back to the Pelican Brief, Alan Pakula, whom I have known for a long time, tells me that you were the one who came up with the idea of having Denzel Washington mm -hmm. in this movie. And what, what inspired you, or what made you think of Denzel for it? <clears throat> well, Alan and I had been um, discussing and sort of struggling with the part of Greg Grantham because uh, it, it needed someone who was going to challenge that part and make it sort of ten times what it could be kind of thing. I mean, it's a great part on the page, and then I felt that, you know, to find someone who transcended it all, do you know, is, was really what I was looking for. And um, a very good friend of mine whose opinion I really respect had just seen Malcolm X, so he kept going on and on and on about Denzel Washington, and suddenly I sort of just stopped in my tracks and thought, well, this is the answer to my Greg Grantham question, is Denzel Washington. So I called and talked to Alan about it. And I think that certainly um, Denzel is just quite obviously a great actor. Uh, knowing him now as well as I do, he's a great person. And certainly he brought things to Greg Grantham that were beyond my wildest dreams and I think beyond Alan's wildest dreams. And he, he really uh, gave him so much depth and dimension that you really need for these two people to, to be able to come together and join forces in the way that they do. You need two sort of complex, interesting characters. And he was just tremendous, I thought. The ending in the book is a little more romantic than the ending of the movie. Did you all ever discuss that? Well, I don't, I don't think it's more romantic. I think it's more, um, it's more uh, spelled out. It's more obvious. And I think what we, we, what we were going for um, was not necessarily less romance, but was more sort of um, spin your own tail, you know, uh, from that point. And I think that, I think that certainly uh, the way that we, we drew out the relationship was very interesting. And the feelings that pass between them that are unspoken and, and not acted upon I think creates a great sense of of tension, which is great to play in a scene. And I think that uh, that that the way that Alan chose to do the ending, which I thought was very clever, um, leaves everybody sort of feeling fine and sort of saying, you know, hey, and you can sort of decide what what makes you feel the best about this situation, which I think is nice. Julia, aside from members of your family, who are your heroes or your heroines? Well, I have, I, I have great respect um, for a lot of different types of people. I, I think that I particularly respond to people who uh, remain pure and steadfast in their pursuit of whatever they're doing, whether it be a writer or, you know, a singer, an actor, <clears throat> um, anyone who has a pure pursuit, you know, it could be... But names, do you have a couple of names? Well, people... Like someone like Maya Angelou, or, uh, you know, I have a lot of respect, there are a lot of writers that, you know, <clears throat> most of them dead, these books that I read, these old books, but, um, I, and I think, well, in the entertainment industry, I have, you know, I'm talking about the Pelican Brief, someone like Alan Pakula, who's been in this business for such a long time and made really great films and is a person who is very specific in his pursuit. Someone who doesn't um, deviate into what the masses want or what, you know, is, is trying to fulfill his own desires of work and trying to please himself in a way that will hopefully be pleasing to others but, you know, have sort of a, a pure focus of, of why you're doing something and, and stick with that and not be swayed.
Julia, we have consumed our time once again. And in closing, I will just say, we didn't have a chance to get into this, but uh, best wishes to you uh, and Lyle. Thank you. I am very, very happy for you. Thank and you, you just radiate the happiness <laughs> I'm wishing you. And uh, I just hope that uh, you will have the happiest of holidays with uh, Lyle. And uh, I thank you for your time thank here you today. Thank you very much. You know, Lyle could run the <coughs>
What is it about the people, do you think? They, they're very uh, kind. There's a great kindness. There's a great sense of sort of uh, community and a real, uh, everyone is sort of part of the family until sort of proven otherwise kind of thing. You know, they're, they're very accepting and, and, uh, and very warm and it's beautiful down there, really beautiful. I went to this one place called the Osa Peninsula, which is uh, sort of this little stretch of, of land between the ocean and the rainforest. And it's, it's quite extraordinary down there. And the way the people live down there is so uh, difficult. And they do it in sort of this effortless way. And it's all about the land and, and nature. And it's very peaceful and beautiful down there. Getting back to the Pelican Brief, Alan Pakula, whom I have known for a long time, tells me that you were the one who came up with the idea of having Denzel Washington mm -hmm. in this movie. And what, what inspired you, or what made you think of Denzel for it? <clears throat> well, Alan and I had been um, discussing and sort of struggling with the part of Greg Grantham because uh, it, it needed someone who was going to challenge that part and make it sort of 10 times what it could be kind of thing. I mean, it's a great part on the page, and then I felt that, you know, to find someone who transcended it all, do you know, is, was really what I was looking for. And um, a very good friend of mine whose opinion I really respect had just seen Malcolm X, so he kept going on and on and on about Denzel Washington, and suddenly I sort of just stopped in my tracks and thought, well, this is the answer to my Greg Grantham question is Denzel Washington. So I called and talked to Alan about it. And I think that certainly um, Denzel is just quite obviously a great actor. Uh, knowing him now as well as I do, he's a great person. And certainly he brought things to Greg Grantham that were beyond my wildest dreams and I think beyond Alan's wildest dreams. And he, he really uh, gave him so much depth and dimension that you really need for these two people to, to be able to come together and join forces in the way that they do. You need two sort of complex, interesting characters. And he was just tremendous, I thought. The ending in the book is a little more romantic than the ending of the movie. Did you all ever discuss that? Well, I don't, I don't think it's more romantic. I think it's more, um, it's more uh, spelled out. It's more obvious. And I think what we, we, what we were going for um, was not necessarily less romance, but was more sort of um, spin your own tail, you know, uh, from that point. And I think that, I think that certainly uh, the way that we we drew out the relationship was very interesting and the feelings that pass between them that are unspoken and and not acted upon I think creates a great sense of of tension which is great to play in a scene and I think that uh, that that the way that Alan chose to do the ending which I thought was very clever um, leaves everybody sort of feeling fine and sort of saying, you know, hey, and you can sort of decide what, what makes you feel the best about this situation, which I think is nice. Julia, aside from members of your family, who are your heroes or your heroines? Well, I have, I, I have great respect um, for a lot of different types of people. I, I think that I particularly respond to people who uh, remain pure and steadfast in their pursuit of whatever they're doing, whether it be a writer or, you know, a singer, an actor. <clears throat> um, anyone who has a pure pursuit, you know, it could be... But names, do you have a couple of names? Well, people... Like someone like Maya Angelou or, uh, you know, I have a lot of... Respect. There are a lot of writers that, you know, <clears throat> most of them dead, these books that I read, these old books, but, um, I, and I think, well, in the entertainment industry, I have, you know, I'm talking about the Pelican Brief, someone like Alan Pakula, who's been in this business for such a long time, and made really great films, and is a person who is very 
specific in his pursuit. Someone who doesn't um, deviate into what the masses want or what, you know, is, is trying to fulfill his own desires of work and trying to please himself in a way that will hopefully be pleasing to others but you know have sort of a, a pure focus of, of why you're doing something and, and stick with that and not be swayed. Julia, we have consumed our time once again and in closing I will just say we didn't have a chance to get into this but uh, best wishes to you uh, and Lyle. Thank you. I am very very happy for you Thank and you, you just radiate the happiness <laughs> I'm wishing you. And uh, I just hope that uh, you will have the happiest of holidays with uh, Lyle. And uh, I thank you for your time thank here you today. Thank you very much. You know, Lyle could run the board.